And again, we've uh, spoken briefly about the Windows Firewall with advanced security. I want to get back to this topic. The Windows Firewall must absolutely be running for direct access to function. We are creating the direct access tunnels using the connection security rules that are part of the Windows Firewall with advanced security. If it's your organization's policy to disable the Windows Firewall for whatever reason, and you're using perhaps a third-party firewall, or I guess strangely enough, some people don't want to use a firewall for whatever reason, then direct access is not going to work. The firewall must be running. It must be running on the client side and it must be running on the server side as well. And that's extremely important because we encounter a lot of scenarios in which security administrators are have disabled the Windows firewall on their corporate servers. And so we, uh, if you have group policy objects that are applying to servers or clients to disable the Windows firewall with advanced security, we will need to remove those. The Windows firewall with advanced security must be running in order to support direct access. So another important component to uh, determining whether or not the client can establish direct access tunnels is location. So how does the client know where on the network it is? So it's going to do that by looking at that network location server. Now this particular client here is actually connected to the public internet. So we'll uh, open our network. Uh, connections uh, here. Actually, it's already open, and you'll see that I have the public interface is already enabled. So what this means is that the client has determined that it's outside. Now, if I hit Window key I, highlight network, we can go over here and uh, right click and view connections for our workplace connection, and you see that I am connected remotely. So everything looks good on this particular client. But uh, how can we, uh, if, if it's not, if it's not working correctly, how can we determine whether or not the client thinks it is internal or external? Well, the command to use is uh, part of the NetSH. So it's NetSH, DNS client, and it's uh, we want to use the show state command. One of the things you'll see here is that uh, the output of this command indicates that the machine location here is outside the corporate network. So this tells us that if it's outside the corporate network, the name resolution policy table would be in effect. Now we can view the name resolution policy table by typing another NetSH command. So that's NetSH namespace show policy, and this will give us our policy settings that you saw earlier. It's going to say that, uh, you know, for corp.vintagesurf.com, use this particular DNS server. And if it's uh, this particular host in the corp.vintagesurf.com domain, which is our network location server, uh, it's going to say don't use, excuse me, don't use a DNS server. So it'll use the local DNS server. We can also see the effective policy by showing effective policy. And this will tell us the policy that is actually in place right now. So this is obviously uh, in place now. Let's jump over to our Windows 7 client. Now our Windows 7 client is uh, connected to the private network. So this is inside or in on our corporate network. So let's take a look at this. Here, when we, when we issue the NetSH namespace show effective policy command, you'll see that the direct access settings would be turned off when the computer is inside the corporate network. So we can actually look at the output of the command uh, NetSH DNS client show state, and you'll see that the machine location for this particular network is inside the corporate network. So if we're troubleshooting a direct access client that's unable to connect, we probably want to make sure that it believes it's outside the corporate network. So if this was on the public internet and it still said it was inside the corporate network, I would need to resolve that issue and figure out why uh, that particular profile was not working. So again, as we'd mentioned, the Windows Firewall is obviously key to establishing our direct access connectivity. So the Windows Firewall must be enabled, and it also, the only time the direct access tunnels are enabled are when the Windows Firewall profile, it, either the public or the private profile, are enabled. It is not enabled when the domain profile is up. We can actually look at that using another NetSH command. So we're going to use NetSH, ADV Firewall, and uh, we'll use the monitor and show a current profile. 
it will indicate here that the public profile is enabled and on the network interface network 2. So anytime we have the public profile or the private profile enabled we can initiate or establish direct access connectivity. If for some reason this said domain profile or if the profile was off then certainly that would present a challenge for us and we would need to resolve that. So let's take a look at uh, determining at least from the command line if the firewall is actually enabled. So we can determine if the Windows firewall is enabled actually from the command line by looking at the output of NetSH, ADV firewall, show all profiles, state. And here you'll see that the domain profile firewall is on, at least the, it's not the active profile, but the firewall is actually on for each of our profiles. So that's good to know. Now some additional areas to check uh, for uh, issues when you're looking at or when you're troubleshooting direct access connectivity is with the various transition protocols. Now recall from uh, some of our earliest conversations in this lesson, we talked about that direct access from a client perspective is IPv6 only. So the client always communicates IPv6 from the direct access client to the direct access server. Now, we're connecting via an IPv4 medium over either you know the public internet, and so we need to be able to translate or tunnel those protocols from IPv6 uh, over an IPv4 network. And we use a couple of different transition protocols. We use the 6 to 4 transition protocol, we use the Teredo IPv6 transition protocol, and then lastly we use also the IP HTTPS transition protocol. So anytime we're trying to troubleshoot direct access connectivity issues, we want to make sure that those interfaces are available to us and working and, and operational and proper. Now, I'm just going to uh, issue the IP config slash all command. We're going to look at a couple of things on this Windows 8 direct access client. Now, this client is connected to the public internet. So it's a uh, public interface is available. If I scroll up, you'll see here that my Ethernet adapter public has an IPv4 address that is from the public IPv4 addresses range. So this is connected, this particular system is connected directly to the public internet. Now, the 6 to 4 uh, IPv6 transition protocol is used anytime we have a, a client that has a public IPv4 address. So in this case, I can scroll down and I will see a tunnel 6 to 4 adapter. One of the things that I want to make sure here is that it has an IPv6 address assigned to it. So if it does not and states that it's disabled, we certainly have an issue there that we need to resolve. Now that doesn't mean that it still can't establish connectivity. It may mean that it just defaults back to another uh, transition protocol. It will start with 6 to 4 if it has a public IPv4 address. If it has a private IPv4 address and it's behind the client is behind a NAT device, it will fall back to a Teredo interface or ultimately perhaps even fall back to an IP HTTPS interface. But here the tunnel adapter is indicating that it does have an IP address and that it is active. We can also get some additional information about the 6 to 4 interface by using the NetSH command. So we use NetSH interface 6 to 4 show state and it will give us some information. What we want to see here is that the uh, tunnel adapter, that the 6 to 4 state shows something other than disabled. So in other words, we want to see qualified or default here, and that's fine. Also, just a, a quick uh, tip regarding the NetSH command line, if you've not used this before, you can actually use, uh, much like Cisco command line, you can actually use uh, abbreviations. So if I were to type in NetSH int 6 show state, it would actually give me the same information. So I'm going to type them out for you here, but know that you can shorten those if you wish. So that's our uh, 6 to 4 interface. So it looks like it's working correctly there. Uh, so everything looks good with the tunnel adapter to 6 to 4 adapter. It's enabled and it has an IPv6 address. Since my client has a public IPv4 address, that's probably the transition protocol that it's going to use. So we're good there. So now let's jump over to our Windows 7 Direct Access Client, and it's connected to the internet in a little bit different fashion. So you can see here that it is connected to the public internet, but in this case, in this case you'll see that it has a 
private IPv4 address assigned to its network uh, public interface. So this means it's behind a border router or an edge firewall that's performing network address translation, or NAT. So it has a private IPv4 address. In this case, you'll notice that there is no tunnel 6 to 4 adapter on this particular system. And the reason for that is because the IPv6 6 to 4 transition protocol uh, is only used when the machine has a public IP address. So in this case, we have a private IP address. So in this case, we should see the Teredo tunneling adapter enabled and active. And we do see that. So we have a Teredo tunneling interface. And you'll see that it has a valid public IPv6 address assigned to it. So that's great. And again, we can get additional information about the uh, Teredo interface using NetSH. So I'll use NetSH interface. Teredo show state. And this is going to give us some information about the Teredo connectivity. So you'll see that it's going to attempt to connect to da.vintagesurf.com uh, through group policy. That's how that was configured. Uh, one of the things that's important for the state of the client is that it should indicate that it is qualified. So we want to make sure that it's qualified and not uh, disabled. Uh, also, a couple of things to notice here is that uh, the local mapping here. So the local mapping is my local IPv4 address, and the external NAT mapping is the external interface on, in this case, my edge firewall for my lab. So there's some information here that we can use to perform additional troubleshooting for the Teredo interface as well. Ultimately, we have connection established here, and so we can go down to our status indicator. This indicates the corporate network is working correctly. And so what that means is that I've established a connection to the direct access server using the Teredo tunneling interface. Now, what I want to demonstrate is the IP HTTPS interface. And to do that, I actually need to make some changes on my lab's edge firewall. So I'm going to do that right now off screen. And so what I've done here is I've actually restricted my external firewall and allow only HTTP and HTTPS out for this particular client. So this client no longer has access to the Teredo protocol. Recall from our earliest conversations where we uh, mentioned that uh, Teredo uses UDP as its transport and it uses UDP port 3544. So in this case, with the firewall not allowing outbound UDP access, we should see a change in connectivity here. So you'll see that my client, my Windows 7 client, still indicates that I have corporate network connectivity. Uh, if I look at the IP uh, config settings here, we'll take a look at this. You'll see that I still have my private IPv4 address here. The tunnel adapter Teredo is now disconnected. And that makes sense. But what you'll notice here is that the tunnel adapter IP HTTPS interface is now active and has a valid public IPv6 address assigned to its interface. So that's all good. Everything looks good. And then we have uh, established connectivity there. Once again, you can get information about the HTTPS interface through the NetSH command. So let's look at that. So it's NetSH interface, HTTPS tunnel, show, and, and un weird not state, but actually interface. And it gives us some information. So it tells me it's a client. This is extremely important. And again, this is the URL and the, the, the full URL for the HTTPS listener, or the IP HTTPS listener on my direct access server. If this is incorrect uh, or this does not resolve to the correct IP address, then we're certainly going to have some challenges in connecting. It also indicates that the status is active for this in particular interface. So that's good as well.